Hello ladies and gentlemen, Dave Dobbs here, aka David Phil from A Book Laughing Gas. Um, it's 5th of June 2016 today and I want to give you my most up-to-date timeline of Nibiru because there's a lot of stuff coming out, there's something coming out on TV on the 7th of on the 7th of June, Tuesday the 7th of June, which is a Channel 4 thing, which is a look at my brother and, my, and myself's kind of uh, our lifestyle and and in it, I, I talk a lot about Nibiru, and so I think a lot of people are going to be curious about where I, where I stand on the subject of Nibiru since making that film, because another sighting has come into place. And so um, it's, really, it's really been quite an exciting discovery of seeing how this thing unfolds and what this thing is doing and, and all its movements. And I haven't got it right. I'm not correct in this estimate. It's what I understand so far, and that's all I've ever, ever been given or giving in the information is what I'm getting up to a certain point and I've just been able to isolate up until now I've only been able to isolate a 200 day cycle um, in Nibiru going around whatever this second thing is so let me show you the cycle and take you around so you're completely up to date okay so that should run the whole loop from 2010 right up to 2016 where I'm assuming this kind of exits our the central hub of our solar system so we're just looking at the general movement of nemesis coming over the top of the sun with this thing circling around it coming rapidly up to 2016 now and we're going to go again and explore this a little bit more deeply to understand this date and this point right here why we arrive at this point, this point all these different sightings that we've seen along the way to arrive at this point. Okay, so let's run 2010 through and pause it right there. And so what you're actually seeing there is Nemesis coming up behind the sun. Just, we're basically at the end of 2010 coming into 2011. Nemesis coming up behind the sun. Okay, then, so we go into 2011, and March 2011. Now, I don't know if the angle of this is exactly like this. It could easily be like this. Which means in March 2011, Whatever that big thing is, our second sun would be very close to Earth at that stage. Might possibly explain Fukushima. Okay, so let's continue around in 2011 to 5th of August. Um, and we see this sighting here. Okay, so seeming as this was the first real sighting that I've had of um, what I think is... is Nibiru um, circling around Nemesis and we only see it in the highest point so if we take the 5th of August 2011 if we take that as the first sighting and I've worked out this 200 day cycle so just just see if this cycle works take 5th of August 2011 add 200 days and times it by 10 Okay, so let's keep going to the next sighting, which is on the 2nd of February 2012. Now, it's very worth noting here, because both these sightings, the first one on the 5th of August and this second one on the 2nd of February 2012, um, the following year, were both listed as possible sightings of Comet um, Ellen. So... We were expecting that to fly by. We were told that's going to be a big thing in our sky. And this shows up. Um, if it's on the 200-day cycle, um, we'd be expecting it on Tuesday the 21st of February 2012. Which means on a 200-day cycle, we'd be 19 days out. So let's keep going to the next point on our timeline which is the 8th of September 2012. So it's worth noting there we have no witness flyby whatsoever on that date. So we're missing one at that point. So let's keep going to the 14th February 2013 and take a look at this piece of footage, which 
is also very interesting. It's so weird, man. It's a flock of birds, that'd make a cool picture. See, they look like they look like they're moving now, but it's taken them so long to go that far. They should have been out of the out of our frame of reference like minutes ago, like 20 minutes ago or something. No, yeah, I mean, they're moving so freaking slow. It's yeah. so weird, man. Awesome. Did you take that picture? Love the birds. Love the birds. Ooh, get it with the birds. And this comes a very interesting time. As a reference. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, on our 200 day prediction cycle, we'd be expecting the 27th of March 2013, but it came on 14th February 2013. And that means basically it's 42 days out. So, it arrived 42 days earlier than the scheduled 200 day um, time. Now, that could have happened for multiple reasons, but we were all expecting Comet Ison at that stage. Um, it actually turned up on Valentine's Day, 14th of February. Um, and you know what came before the, um, the day before that? The big Russian meteorite. Um, I think it was on the 13th of February 2013. Okay, so let's keep going round, and we come to the next sighting, which is on the 14th of October, 2000. Okay, here it is again. I'm using night mode now. And it's just moving very slowly towards the eastern sky with a mist around it the whole time. A mist that is circling. The mist is like... Hard to describe elliptical around them. Heading into the east now. The mist follows it the whole way. It's silent. Fairly bright at first, I thought it was the moon. Size wise, maybe the size of maybe quarter moon. The amazing thing is the mist is uh, just moves with it the whole way. the ocean below. Still moving. Constant speed. Okay, so on a 200 day cycle that we've been looking at, that would have been due on the 13th of October 2013. It came 14th of October 2013. So we were a day out. But what was interesting is the perspective. Let me just give you a fast forward of it here. What's interesting is this sense of something coming towards us with the tail behind it, and we're getting this amazing view. And for this reason, I've got a funny feeling that our cycle of nemesis going over the top and coming around the sun is a little bit more like this okay so let's keep going around now to 1st of May 2014 and we'll just make a note at that point to to say that there was no witness sighting that I could find on that day in our 200 day cycle so let's keep going which means we come to the 23rd of November 2014 to this sighting over Canada.
it's an incredible sighting. Um, we would have actually been expecting in our 200 day cycle um, for it to be on Monday the 17th of November 2014, which means basically we were six, we were six days out, which is a distinct pattern that's starting to show here. So let's keep going now to the next sighting which was on 8th of, 8th of June 2015. So this was seen by Vicky Acklin um, on the 8th of June 2015, just after sunset, literally following the sun down. We would have been expecting the 5th of June 2015. So that's three days out. So we're really starting to see this pattern now. Okay, so let's keep going now to the next sighting, which was my own sighting on the 28th of August 2015, where I was with my girlfriend at the time, Dana, um, Dana Day, and, and she pointed up, we were up in the Pyrenees, and she pointed up to me and said, Dave, what the, what's that? And I turned around and I looked, I looked and I was just like, w what is that? You know, and up to that point, I'd only ever seen this whole... I'd seen Nibiru in a, in a crazy dream that told me this was what the fuss was all about. And then to go up to the Pyrenees and suddenly see this sighting and begin the calculations of actually trying to, trying to find... realising that there really was something up there and, and starting to assemble this whole timeline, which I'm giving to you now. And, of course, this... Um, this posting which came out on last messages um a month a month later which was very similar to my to what we saw is just a lot bigger and of course um that led up to the big sighting on the 22nd of december 2015 that i'd made a prediction in the previous video where my truck had burst into flames um three hours after i posted the video and so you can imagine that was pretty mad because i'd gone up to the mountains and discovered this Nibiru nemesis, made this crazy video, and um, and then the truck had burnt, that truck had literally caught fire directly after, and it was because of the truck catching fire um, that caused a lot of attention. That really put me on the radar a lot more. I thought it was really losing everything, but actually put me on the radar a lot more in my whole story, it made my story a lot more public, and then the video went on to get nearly 100,000 hits. Which I th which was when Channel Four uh, or Love Productions got in contact with me soon after that, and um, and it all started getting quite curious, and I was seen as really quite a madman, until of course um, we come round in the cycle to well to the next point, which is the twenty second of December, and and we have these two sightings. So this is um, an amazing shot. It was either on the 19th or the 20th of December 2015, two days before our 200-day um, window. And, you know, I wondered what the tail was made of. And, you know, what I'm thinking now is because the way it orbits around this thing but gets very close to the sun each time it does a cycle, I'm of a mind that the surface is actually getting vaporised by the heat of our sun as it as it's flying on through. I don't think this is ice, I don't think this is a comet, I think this is a planet and the surface is literally leaving a trail of everything that's coming from this, um, that, that is the vapour trail and Wally. then this four days later. Holy moly, that's no freaking airplane. December 24th, 2015, Central Indiana, this is Becky Lewis. Oh my freaking God, are you kidding me? Let me tell you, that is no freaking airplane. That's in the Southeast where I always get the red glow. Holy God, shit, I can't even hold it still. Please excuse my language, oh my gosh. I am just tripping out. What the frick? Oh my freaking gosh. Friends, it is going to go behind that stuff and I won't be able to see it anymore. Oh my gosh. And of course, here's where we've had the big sighting that's changed everything. 
this is on the 28th of March 2016. Now this was a day before I made my, um, or a day after I made my last video saying that we were coming to the 100 day point in the 200 day cycle. So we were basically 100 days, um, we were right in, in between the um, 22nd of December 2015 and the 11th of July 2016. So um, Becky Lewis filmed this on that day. And this is filmed at sunset, so it looks like it's heading in the same direction, except that note that she's filming this at sunset, not sunrise. So you've got a picture that she's at looking out at the same kind of thing, but she's upside down from where she was um, at sunrise when she first filmed it on the 24th of December 2015, 100 days before. So it's, you're getting the reverse thing. So what this actually means is we're seeing um, Nibiru and another planet that's obviously orbiting um, Nemesis. We're seeing these planets for the first time on the, far, on the far side of their cycle, which means it's passed clean through the ecliptic. Because we haven't been able to see these because they've been too close to the sun. And suddenly on this side they're not close to the sun anymore. So it means it's dropped through the southern hemisphere of our of our solar of our solar system and is heading out from whence it came. It's absolutely clear evidence. We've been waiting for that hundred day appearance at some point throughout this cycle. We know it, unless it's just going to continue to orbit orbit our sun, but if it begins and exit out and we understand that it's finally come through, clean come through, um, to the southern hemisphere of our solar system. Uh, note that there's um, two things that are, two comets, asteroids, whatever you want to call them. To me, they're just two planets orbiting Nemesis, uh, Nibiru and something else. And we saw it um, in, uh, what was it, February 2012. And we're seeing it again here um, in 2016. So I'm just assuming that we're getting to learn about another orbit around around Nemesis that only shows itself periodically. We've definitely got the 200-day orbit of whatever that is, but we're getting something else there as well um, that's also coming up every occasionally. But it's a very clear. They're both obviously clearly orbiting the same thing. And they're both coming to view um, only rarely, but Nibiru has a distinct 200-day orbit, whatever that is. That is Nibiru. Okay, and pretty much hereafter, you know, we're in prediction now, aren't we? Um, we come to July the um, 11th, which is the next highest point in the cycle that we've understood it, but we're starting to see a big change because of our previous sighting where we've seen Nibiru plunge through the southern aspect of our solar system. We've learned so much more about its position in that moment that, um, you know, everything I did with Channel 4, we hadn't had that sighting yet, so it was still unclear. We Had we missed it or had it happened? It's happened. It's come through. So now we can only predict that this is the final big passing point. I mean, I don't truly know the angle, the trajectory. It could be that it's more like this. And which could potentially give it a later time. You know, we're talking days and weeks, more than months here. A difference but at this point we've got a juncture around about December January it could be earlier you know I truly do not know its position I'm desperately trying to calculate it on a very limited amount of sightings and informations uh, information I built this whole flash player um, you know what to do with the information that I've had <clears throat> No one's really been able to understand me. I'm just completely doing this on my own. I live in a truck. I'm trying to put this information together. I've just lost everything in a fire. I'm trying to make enough money just to sort of like get 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 all the stuff. So I'm building a house while I'm doing this. I'm trying to work out how best to, how best to do this. So I'm thinking, 
you know, because I've had to try and find some work to make some money and everything else like that. So to try and put all this information together, I thought how best to do it. And I thought best to learn learn how to use Flash and to try and compress all this information into a into some functional um, pathway that everyone can understand. And this is this is the best I can do. And you know the crazy thing is that all this information has come in whilst I'm giving this crazy message about, which is the reason I wrote my book Laughing Gas, which was that Britain would face a choice of whether we choose to stay in Europe or or cut our anchors at this time. And you know you might think that David Cameron is pro Europe, but I don't believe that's the case. I believe he's orchestrated this. He was the one who set up, um, who brought about the Euro the European referendum. Um, in the first place, and then you've got Tony Blair, you know, um, representing sort of like uh, Europe at the moment, while the Chilcot case is going on, um, which is disputing whether the Iraq war was legitimate. Not that Tony Blair can be prosecuted in this because he's got immunity from this from the very start. So you've got this person that's representing Europe that we all absolutely loathe. We've got all these characters representing Europe at the moment. You know, Tony Blair was going to be the president of Europe, but was he? You know, in Europe it was an absolute joke. But Rupert Murdoch and all the tabloid papers are making us seem, making us feel as if we absolutely loathe Europe at the moment, as if we want out. And this is a big part of the whole political play that's, that's happening as a result of what's coming in here. It's... This is much bigger than you're realising. There's a much, much... Um, a lot, of, a lot of people truly understand that this thing's coming in and are gearing up for it and breaking us away from Europe is, is a very dangerous thing right now because you break away from all forms of human rights if you do this right now. We head into a situation where we are we really are on our own and we know that it's t to do this because we are in fear of refugees coming into our country when we know that these refugees are in many cases fleeing the very bombs that we've actually supplied and and a lot of conflict that we've exacerbated um, we know the best solution to this is not to close our borders, but to keep our borders open, but to stop supplying weapons and stop creating wars. You know, we can, we can look and say, did Europe do this? Did Europe do all the crimes that Tony Blair did? Did Europe do all the crimes that, that David Cameron did? Um, well, I, I consider crimes, you know, invading Libya. I, I think that was I think that was wrong. Just like to, I, I thought Tony Tony Blair invading Iraq was wrong. Did Europe do those things? Was that Europe to blame? You know, you've got to ask yourself: Did Europe do it? Are you being fooled here? Because guys, I'm not going to be at Glastonbury this year. You know, I number one, I haven't. You know, I've been invited to go along and what have you, and get involved in in, in the gorilla bar and what have you, which is a big part of what I've done for many years. But I'm not going to be doing the House of Commons because <clears throat> I'm not really welcome to do that. You know, I'm pretty mad at the moment, probably going and soon to be the maddest man in this country. But I cannot contribute to a massive show that's going to be a massive distraction to this um, EU vote because I see what they're doing. They're trying to distract you away from it, repulse you away from, from, from Europe. And, and Europe is what you won after the Second World War, after all the lobbying. That's what you finally got, a proportionally run electoral system. And now all I can ask you is, if you believe in your heart it is an, a, a, not, a, an a undemocratic process, can I ask you, hand on your heart, did you vote in that, what you call a non-democratic process? Because... If you didn't vote, then I can only tell you that that, what you call was a non-democratic process, was simply a non-democratic process for you. Europe didn't do this, guys. Tony Blair, our horrible government, 
David Cameron, you know, these are all, you know, you can't blame Europe for this. You're being fooled. You're being fooled. Don't do it, guys, because you don't want to break from Europe when this thing is coming in. You're going to, you just don't want to do that. It's called karma displacement, where you blame something else. It's a scapegoat. You don't want to make this mistake. Guys, I'm not going to go to Glastonbury. I'm going to vote. And then I'm going to I'm going to get out of the country because I've got a funny feeling you're all going to do what you normally do. You're not going to vote. And then you're going to blame you're going to blame your apathy. Or you're going to blame the whole system that is really your apathy. You know, 66 percent of the population didn't vote in the last European election and it was taken over by the very people that are telling you it's such a terrible thing. Take, took over the European Commission, tried to try, drive us into TTIP, and then you blame Europe, but it's it's actually the non-voters that had complete power. It's a proportionally run system. Guys, you're being duped. You know, don't let your apathy take over here. Don't let this big show, Glastonbury, be a massive distraction. Make sure you vote. Make sure you do what you've got to do. You know, because if you lose Europe, you lose, you truly lose all power of choice, which means you lose your sovereignty. And that's what this is all about. Because if you're not sovereign when this thing comes in, you are in a very vulnerable place. We are in a very vulnerable place. So I'm, 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 I'm going to vote by post myself and I'm not going to, I don't even want to be in this country at the, at the point of that election in case you, de you decide to vote. To vote out or just do the worst thing possible and sit on the fence and don't vote at all. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry for a bit of a rant, but loving you and leaving you.